Unit 12. Products. Track 58. Speaker 1. I'm 20 years old, and I've wanted a Ford Mustang since I was 10. I now have an eye-catching 1998 black Mustang Coupe with leather seats. This car is fast and furious and is everything I have always dreamed of. It has been virtually maintenance-free. I give my friends a ride in it with the top down, and they think it's awesome. Overall, it's comfortable, reliable, gives great performance, has great interior and exterior design, and is fun to drive. Unit 12. Products. Track 59. Speaker 2. The best thing I've ever bought is a trampoline for my son and daughter. They've had hours and hours of fun playing on it with their friends, and it's been really good for parties. It's weatherproof and durable. It really has lasted a long time, over 12 years. I've even used it myself. It's a great form of exercise. It wasn't cheap, but we were happy to pay for safety and wanted a high-quality trampoline. Ours has a strong, rigid frame and high-quality springs, so we get a really deep bounce. If you want to buy one, make sure it fits the space in your garden. And for safety, remember that all trampolines are designed for one jumper at a time. Unit 12. Products. Track 60. Speaker 3. Well, I work from home and used to spend a lot of time propping myself up in bed with a laptop. But I recently bought this fantastic chair that copies the shape of your body when it's stretched out. It's made from an aluminum and plastic frame and has lots of pillows that support every part of the body. The computer monitor is cleverly suspended in front of me to prevent neck strain. The keyboard and mouse are designed to be placed on the user's lap. I really can relax whilst using the internet, and I haven't had any neck problems since I started using it. Also, the curved frame provides support for my back. It's also eye-catching and quite popular with my design-conscious friends. Unit 12. Products. Track 61. Speaker 4. I'm an experienced backpacker and I've been to four continents, up mountains, through deserts and jungles, and slept in smart hotels and on train station benches. Obviously, everyone needs a good rucksack when travelling. But to answer your question, a large Arab scarf. That was the best thing I ever bought. It's a sarong, a scarf, a turban, a beach towel, a bath towel. Tie the corners together and you've got a bag. Hang it from a window for 15 minutes and it's dry. All backpackers should get one. Unit 12. Products. Track 62. What makes a product great? The three or four things I would look for in a product, what makes a great product is that it's, firstly, that it's easy to use, that you don't need to think about what you need to do. You don't have to spend time reading a manual, that it's intuitive and simple and obvious of how you should use that. The other thing is, at its heart, a um, product should solve a problem or fulfill a need. So, for example, the, um, the electric cars that are coming out today, they solve an essential problem in the world, which is that we are running out of oil, and at the same time there is a problem with global warming caused by burning fossil fuels. So that's a great example, electric car, of something that solves a problem. And the third point is simply that it should be functional, that it should be helpful, that it should make your life easier, and make things better in some way. Unit 12. Products. Track 63. It's the Tesla Roadster. It's the new 
electric vehicle which goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds. I drove one in France in from, from Nice to Cannes about a month ago and I've never driven a car as exciting as this. Driving it is like a cross between driving a Scalextric car, a bumper car that you used to have at the old fun fairs and probably still do have at fun fairs, and a rocket ship. The response that you have from the accelerator is instant. So it's not like with a turbo lag, it's not driving a, a petrol driven car where there's some gap between when you push the pedal and it goes. It's absolutely instant. And as you release your foot from the accelerator, the car slows down in the same way a Scalextric car does when you pull on the trigger. So the Tesla is very exciting. Unit 12, Products, Track 64. What product do you expect to see in the near future? There's a number of innovations that I think are happening at the moment that will give us new and exciting products. Possibly one of the most exciting is the driverless car. Not because I don't like driving, but sometimes driving can be very boring. Driving in cities is a pain as opposed to driving in the countryside. Driverless cars will be with us certainly by 2020. General Motors plan to have a driverless car on the road by 2018. Google has put money into this, Audi is putting money into this. We're in a position at the moment where cars are shifting from completely driver controlled to some control by the car itself, by the computer within the car. And what we'll see over the next years is the shift so that just as with a 747 um, aeroplane, you can either drive it yourself or hand it over to the machine to drive. Unit 12, Products, Track 65. What's your favorite product and why? My favorite product is my Mac computer. It's a black Mac, so it looks good. And the reason I like it is because I'm a journalist. It's the thing that I use to write my work on. Uh, I'm writing a novel. It's the thing I use to write my novel on. It connects me to email because obviously I have Wi-Fi at home. When I go to a cafe, I have Wi-Fi. I take it with me when I go on holiday and I go to places that have Wi-Fi. I can Skype video and talk to friends in New York. I can Skype video and talk to friends in Australia. I'm in constant contact with my parents through the machine and it has the wealth of the internet, the information that is there and all the people that that can connect me to. So for me, my computer and its connection to the internet and its connection to people around the world makes it invaluable and makes my life more connected and more fun. Unit 12, Products, Track 66. I'm going to tell you about our new product, a fast ice cube maker for use in the kitchen. It was designed by Paolo Rossi and launched last month. We're promoting it at the moment on the TV shopping channels and using a lot of point-of-sale advertising. We're distributing it to upmarket department stores and specialist kitchenware shops. Now, about the product. It comes in three colours, white, black and silver. It has several special features. As you can see, it's stylish, well-designed and elegant, as you would expect from a Paolo Rossi product. We think it will be extremely popular with people who like giving parties. It's made of stainless steel and is very sturdy. It's a bit larger and heavier than some other ice making machines. It weighs approximately 12 kilos, but it's very strong and reliable. It was tested for months before we put it on the market and it never broke down. You can check its dimensions in the handout I'll be giving you. What about its main selling points? Well, it's very economical in terms of power and exceptionally quiet when you're using it to make ice. Also, it's easy to use. 
You just put water in and press a button. Nothing could be simpler. What about its performance? Well, that's one of the ice maker's outstanding features. It produces faster and bigger quantities of ice than any other model. It can produce 15 ice cubes in eight minutes, two kilos of ice in an hour, or 18 kilos in 24 hours. Incredible! Now a word or two about its benefits for the user. Firstly, it'll save party givers a lot of time making ice cubes. And because the machine's so versatile, it can make cubes of different sizes. It's fairly expensive compared with other models. The retail price is around 320 euros. But it's great value for money because it comes with a full five-year guarantee on parts and labour. We think the ice maker is a real winner. From now on, when people give parties, there won't be any embarrassing moments when they run out of ice and have to wait hours for a few more cubes. Those days are over. It simply won't happen if they have our ice maker in their kitchen. Thanks very much, everyone. Are there any questions? Unit 12. Products. Track 67. OK, Hugh, I think we're ready now to put everything in writing on the website. Shall I summarise what we've agreed? Sure, go ahead. OK, first point. We're looking for products that show originality and creativity. If they're really unique, so much the better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our awards are meant to encourage innovation. It's the most important point, so it's got to come first in the list of criteria. OK. Next, I think this point is important too, we're looking for things that improve consumers' lifestyle, that give them a better quality of life or a wider choice of a product, maybe. Yes, we want products that really benefit consumers in some way. OK. And I think we also agreed the winning products will need to be um, environmentally friendly. Is that right? Well, all we actually said was that they shouldn't be bad for the environment, not harmful to it in some way. Right. We had three other points for the list. Mm -hmm. um, the winning companies will have to explain to us their plans for marketing their products, mm -hmm. tell us how they'll advertise and promote them, and they get bonus points if they have creative plans, if their marketing is a bit different in some way. Uh -huh. Now, let's see, what else? We want the products to make plenty of money for the company. Mm. They've got to be profitable. So the question we'll be asking them is, will it make money or is it just a fad? Here today, gone tomorrow. Exactly. And the last point, is the product advanced in terms of technology? Uh, I, I think we can put that another way, Chica. The question is, has the company used technology in a new way, in an interesting or exciting way? Mm. That's what we're looking for. Working Across Cultures 4, Track 68. Today we're going to be talking about culture, what it is and how knowledge of it can help when doing business internationally. I've divided my talk into two parts. Firstly, I'd like to talk about the visible aspects of culture, the things we can see. And secondly, the invisible aspects, the parts we can't see. OK, so firstly, the visible aspects. Earlier I asked you to think about this. What did you come up with? The weather. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you laugh, but it does have an effect on culture and behaviour. Anything else? We came up with food, written language, the way people drive, mm. and uh, the style of buildings. Yes, very good. The point is that these are easy to see and may be different to what you are used to. In business terms, this will also include the way people greet each other and how close they stand when talking, what we call personal space. This may also extend to the use of gestures with the hands or face, in other words, body language. There may also be differences between the roles of men and women. Working Across Cultures 4, Track 69. 
Moving on, I'd now like to take a quick look at the other aspects of culture which we cannot see, the invisible parts. These are things such as beliefs and attitudes, which are important because they help us to understand how people in other cultures think and operate. This will depend on the whole structure of society, how important things like the individual, the family, the team or group is. Building relationships and developing trust over a period of time are much more important in certain cultures than getting instant results. Risk-taking may be seen in a different way, so it may take longer to make decisions. Attitudes to time are also important, not only in relation to things like deadlines, but how long or short-term the thinking is. Business deals could take a very long time. One further point is about the status of a person. Remember, status may be linked to age or connections, rather than simply talent or ability. Overall, it's clear to me that when people talk about cultural problems, they are usually in these areas. They're not language problems. They're to do with misunderstandings of behaviour caused by attitudes and values which are different and may be difficult to understand. To sum up, the most important thing when doing business with other cultures is to be more aware of your own culture. What is normal for you may seem strange to people from other cultures. As well as thinking about your own culture, the final tips I can give are to be sensitive, to try and notice things and be flexible in your approach. You can't hope to cover everything, but with a little bit of research, an open mind and an awareness of your own culture, you can go far. Thank you and good luck. <laughs>